Hi, my name is Kylie Henson, and I have MS. I won't die from MS, but there is no cure. I'm Nick, and I have MS. I may not look sick, but the MS is still there. My name is Monica Herrera, and I have MS. You can't catch MS from me. My name is Jeremy, and I suffer from MS. I'm the same person I was before. Don't treat me differently. I may not have any symptoms that are visible, but MS is still there for me. Sometimes I have trouble concentrating. This makes school more difficult for me. When I get a relapse, I may get new symptoms or my old symptoms may get worse. Sometimes I feel numbness and tingling and it can be anywhere in my face, in my hands, in my feet, and I never know where it's gonna come up next. I was diagnosed um, in March of 2005, so that was a little over a year ago. And what happened was that um, a few months before that, mm -hmm. I had optic neuritis. And that's, you know, when, when one of your eyes, when the optic nerve kind of fades and... So were you seeing double or were you just see, not no, being I able just to see not, I, couldn't, I just couldn't see from one eye. Okay, so you're blind. blind. Yeah. I had no idea what MS was, not at all. I, which is kind of scary because if I didn't know about it, imagine how many other people my age or anybody doesn't know about it. You know, I had never even heard of it. I was like, M-S, what does that stand for? We're Same. talking about if we tell people and how I don't. But when I was, I was, I got diagnosed when I was little. So yeah, it's so different to be, be cruel. yeah, it's different to be like in junior high, going through phases and if you tell someone that you have a disease, I think that if you cough on them, that they're gonna get it. And it affects my physical capability. Sometimes I get frustrated. I don't really get mad, but I get frustrated. It's frustrating to have a girlfriend or boyfriend because they don't understand. I mean, as much as they want to, they really can't. They can't tell how you're feeling. As much as they want to be there, they really don't understand how to because, you know, it's, you don't know what they need or, you know, I have MS and I still don't know what I need. My mom still doesn't even really face the facts. <laughs> we researched it, but at first she didn't want to face the facts that her daughter had in this. She didn't want to hear it, she didn't want to believe it. And um, so it took a long time. It, like For me to have to accept it, she had to accept it. Sometimes people don't understand how difficult it can be to live every day. I mean, to take shots every day. That is very scary, because <laughs> I'm, I'm a dancer. I, I need to be on stage, I can't be in a wheelchair, but it's just something you have to face and, and be ready to handle if it happens. I worry about not being able to play soccer and not being healthy and looking healthy and I worry about walking. I think that's, like, that's my biggest fear is waking me up in the morning and not knowing if you can walk or, you know what I mean, like that's a huge worry. I have my own contact list on my MySpace of all the kids who have MS. We have our own little group so we can chat and, you know, what's bothering us and what, how we're feeling. But most of the conversations we have are like the, the fears. The fears of what can happen or what we don't want to happen. I'm starting college this year. I'm really excited about it. I'm nervous. I'm a theater major. And um, that's very scary because they would be less understanding because it's very cutthroat. And, um, that scares me. I just want to be a normal teenager. Don't be mad if I have to go home because I'm tired. Include me in activities and I'll let you know if I can't do something. I'm the same as I was before, so don't treat me any different. It's not who I am, it's just something that I have to deal with.
but I won't let MSB be. Definitely not. Definitely.